So maybe to kick it off, I mean, I, I wrote a blog entry um, about a week ago that made, I don't want to dominate, I, I really don't want to dominate the conversation, but just to talk about some ideas that other people may be interested in, it may trigger some, some ideas from other people. Um, so basically, I have a uh, calls every two weeks with uh, Laura Tchaikovsky from the, uh, the Ubuntu Local Council. And it's the, the basic goal of the calls is to make sure that I can, I can help where I can. I don't have a huge amount of time to spend on Loco teams. Uh, and Laura does a wonderful job with the rest of the Loco Council. So she basically get, helps inform me about what's going on. And then we can, um, you know, we can talk about through some strategy about what we could do in the future. And we were talking about the, the, the Loco directory. Um, and the idea that I wrote the blog post, which is on my website, journalmaking.org, is, um, is, really, you know, is really two things. Um, one is integrated health. Because one of the challenges that we're finding with Loco teams, uh, and the Loco Council have shared um, with me, is that a lot of the Loco teams don't realize the council exists. And they don't realize how they can help and how they can mentor the local teams to be successful. Or how to even interface with the council. Yeah. yeah. And there's things such as a lot of local teams don't know how to get events in the local directory. Uh, they don't understand that you've got to be, for example, you've got to be, you've got to have a launchpad team. And, you, you know, and the only people can, who can add events are members of those launchpad teams. So there's a lot of kind of important <coughs> knowledge. And a lot of it that there's in the wiki, which we've all talked about countless times before, is a really bad place for documentation to live. So, we're, we're, we're spreading out um, resources into individual portals. So we've got the cloud portal that Ahmed's done some work on, the translations portal is coming forward, and a lot of this documentation is, is built into it. So my, the, the first idea was integrating our, all the, we've got a lot of documentation about the local teams um, on the wiki, is integrating that into the local directory. So if you want anything, if you want to know anything to do with local teams, you go to loco.com, you can find out what a loco team is. You can find out how to start one, how to join one. You can see all the lists of teams and that kind of thing. So that was the first idea. But then the second idea is what I kind of refer to in my head as um, I want it to earn a tab in my browser. And what I mean by that is the only time I ever go to the loco directory is to look something up. Like, oh, I wonder how many loco um, release parties is, is going on or... You know, it's not something that is, is open in my browser all the time. It's like, when I load my browser up, it's always got, you know, burn down chart, it's got Facebook in there, it's got sites that dynamically change. And I'd love that to be the local directory. I'd love to go there and to be able to see blog posts. And I know there's the Twitter stream on there, um, which shows the hash local teams tag. But I'd love to be able to go there and just feel the pulse of the local community every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that would, in turn, inspire people to participate in local teams, because I think local teams are one of the most unsung things that we have in Ubuntu. Like an overall current event. Yeah, yeah just course. like, so I go there, and it's kind of like Planet. Like, we all go to Planet every day and have a look to see what's going on. So Laura says Laura, she, Yeah, Laura said she's planning on writing a static page to, of how, uh, uh, how to of getting your local team on local directory. Hi, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> So, I don't know, that's, those are the two things I think would bring real value. It would raise the visibility of the local directory and would help teams to, I think people will, there's so many local teams, I hear this all the time, so many local teams who just don't realize where the help is. So they're, they, the help's there, they just don't realize it's buried in the wiki right. somewhere. Well, and you want it to be sticky, right? The first time yeah. they see it, you want them to go, oh, this is useful. Yeah. And stay there. Yeah. So, loco.com for such help. And so. So anyway, those are my two ideas. I mean, I don't know whether they're useful or whether the, the team who's doing the work would be interested in doing that. I think that's absolutely useful. Chris is up. Thank you. Michael, hmm? did we, do we still have problems with uh, teams that need to merge because of uh, Launchpad's team names changing? No, I think that's Maybe all working. Yeah. It's all working? And we should have fixed the timeout on demerge also. Yeah, the, the problem was <laughs> because we use the API to import all the um, all the long, the local launchpad teams. If they renamed their team ID, we had two entries in, in, in our database because there was no unique ID for a team object. 
if you see what I mean. Yeah. So we had to implement merge teams button, which sucks a little bit. But it seems that it's no problem anymore. I just thought because we had much better people here. Well, we didn't solve it on our hands, so you probably solved it on yours. Yes, yes, we did. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So maybe, so maybe, maybe two interesting and simple fixes of two it's, it's interesting, well, potentially interesting. I mean, it's interesting for me. It's like some of the idea. <laughs> so it's completely selfish. So it looks like some folks are having trouble hearing us. Can we pull the microphones a little bit closer? Yes, yeah, we can pull a little bit. So maybe two potential solutions could be for the dynamic content is that we have a set of, you know, like how with a lot of um, like WordPress and things like that, you can have RSS feeds based upon tags. Mm -hmm. So we could uh, maybe people who are blogging a lot in the local community, we could encourage them to set up an RSS feed for a local team for a local mm -hmm. team tag, yeah. and then that's a really easy thing to just and then essentially we just integrate the planet into in, into the local directory. Yeah, that could be one thing, and then the other thing is in terms of the help. All I was thinking, what could be interesting is just essentially an integrated, essentially a wiki. Ugh. I mean, it's it's a wiki, so we don't <laughs> like wikis. But well, it's not that we don't like them. They're hard to keep fresh yeah. is the biggest problem. We put information out there and we go, oh, that's done with. And we don't come back for a year and a half. And in six months, it's stale. And as Laura pointed out, it's harder to translate. Exactly. That because it's not problem. static. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maybe the, I mean, Daniel was showing me the work that he's done on the packaging guide. What was that thing you were using? Where the, where Sphinx. 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 That could be... But then that wouldn't be part of local directory. That would be a separate, whatever. It'd be, yeah. yeah. But that would. The, I think the tough thing in terms of translations is you need to agree on what the documentation is going to be, right? And and then have, I guess you'd have brand well, potentially branches for each for each locale. That's Nigel, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> she hears you typing. <laughs> You're a loud type. <laughs> you should hear me when I'm excited. It's the loudest thing in my house. I can have music on and I'm like, kiki, kiki, kiki. That's terrible. Can't even hear the music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, before I forget, if I don't see you guys again during UDS, thanks for the, the time at work that you guys did all over the place. Because I was getting lots of timeouts and now I'm not and I said very mean things to you that you didn't hear, I take all those back. <laughs> <laughs> if only you could redact it from the internet. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been, thanks very much for, for, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys have done a ton yeah, besides awesome. that, but, yeah. but I'm very thankful for that, and I wanted to mention. Cool, man. thank you, it's appreciated. It. Certainly, because I never really get to tell you thanks, so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not that it's more of a please side of thing. Yeah, it's usually the thank you side of thing. Usually I'm going, hey, hmm? get to <laughs> So anyway. <laughs> yeah, I cool. Well, let's not forget you suck in lots of other ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Hey, it's love, puppy. Don't hate. <laughs> Just Don't the hate. two of us. Yeah, that's right. Oh, we can sing that. <laughs> we can make it if we try. Yeah, <laughs> we can do that. So, okay, about the hell. Sorry. The uh, local team help, is it supposed to be a static thing or is it supposed to be something that uh, X number of people can edit? Uh, how, do you, how do you see it? That's not something that's going to change very often, is it? No. So I think it should be static so we can use uh, Launchpad for translations on it. I think it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be additive. Like, so it's rare that mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of revving. I think people are just going to be adding more and more content. Can you use, is Launchpad suitable for, I know, I know Launchpad is good for translating strings, is it suitable for translating paragraphs? Not really. Mm, that's what well, I thought. Francis is going to disagree and he's going to qualify the really, but it's actually not really. Right? Right. It's, <laughs> I mean, people do it. Yeah. But it's, I guess there's a, but an upper limit. Any, it, I mean, it's, it's PO, it's not Launchpad, it's, it's PO that is not designed for that kind yeah. of thing. Okay. So, it's, the, if you change anything in your paragraph, you kind of have to redo the translation. Right. Fuzzy matching might match or not match, so yeah. So it's prob is limited in that area. But right. People, crazy people do it. <laughs> so not really. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's Monday morning. It's only started. It's and, and only just started. Prepared. Yeah. Ow. Um, <laughs> That's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think it? Do you think one thing that maybe? Well, I guess one thing that could be an approach is to essentially use something like Sphinx and then to keep a set schema of documentation. So like maybe the maybe English is the is essentially the master branch and then basically we encourage translators to go in and then and periodically do and, then, and they basically branch it and then and then translate the content. The, yeah. The problem would be similar. You would do translations in Launchpad again, paragraphs again. And um, Sphinx and translations is still still in development. It's almost there. I guess what I'm saying is 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 real lowbrow, as in, um, like you literally just take, let's say you branch the English package, and then you just there's an English paragraph, and you just go in there and like translate the plain text. Or, or like if we have like a bullet point each each cycle, where we expect during that cycle we're going to do some updates to help yeah. or whatever, and we have a, a set point in time where they go in and they say, okay, we have this version of this language, let's take the English text that's been updated. If the English text was the one that was up. And then translate out into the others. Yeah. Or, or so there's like an agreed. This is what we want to document in this cycle. Right. And well, then, and we have to understand too that depending on if we have locations in there, some of the other pages are going to have slight differences. Yeah. Where to find right. things. You know. I I do agree. I'm going to go yeah, back to the little while for the what uh, there. Laura had said. She had mentioned that uh, the whole name scheme on the local directory is horrible. Um, the what? The scheme? You mean the, uh, the the way that the teams name themselves? Oh yeah, has like absolutely. There to me, there should be some sort of. This is how you name your local team. It makes it impossible to find. A new I mean, there's. Trying to find a team in the list, it takes like ten minutes to read through everything and try to find. Yeah, it because you're looking for the name of it yeah. first, and you have to look if it has an Ubuntu at the beginning. Or yeah. I, I hate to pick on the FR team, but the FR team. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't know that FR stands for French, mm -hmm. no clue. But this seems to be, you know, like with Launchpad blueprints as an example, you have a the the, the, the blueprint name that you have in the URL, and then you have the name of the blueprint. So you have community <coughs> dash o dash right. and Chris yeah. dash yeah. is dash brilliant, <laughs> and then you'd have the name of the blueprint, the, the, the human readable one, which is just Chris is brilliant, right. and. Um, mm -hmm. It seems to me that maybe the the solution, maybe maybe kind of like associating metadata with 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 the local directory. So, for example, the French team, you'd associate things such as France, Paris, like mm -hmm. common terms, common right. cities in France that when you search, it would maybe hit the result. Because I guess the perfect experience is you search for something that's relevant. Like I type in Walnut Creek where I live. And it would bring up the California tape. Mm -hmm. well, even just in the list, like I was trying to help someone who's in New Jersey find theirs, and I'm like, I, there's probably one. I don't know, technically, like reading through it's it. It's really and, mashed together, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, either rename them on the list itself and just put them by state or by country. Right, right. and then and some of them use Ubuntu in the beginning. Now, have you yeah. tried some to search? Some of them use Ubuntu in the end. Well, yeah, but I mean, as far as if somebody's just <coughs> poking through and kind of, oh, I wonder if there's, you know. So can, just, can we maybe make that an action item for the council? Because they're the only ones who would have. I don't think it's solvable at that level. I, I think, I think so. that as they come up for uh, the new for renewals, this is the this is the new <laughs> name. No, but what I mean what I mean by that is the reason why traditionally it's been Ubuntu dash and then the essentially the country code. Well, that that's fine for the actual uh, for the but I'm machine. Talking, I'm talking right. I'm talking for the the pretty name. I'm just talking about the display name. They don't need to change the team name. Exactly. It's displayed exactly, and that's nothing we can fix in the local directory itself. But that would have to pad. be a launchpad fix, which what, what teams have to do. Go on. That to me seems reasonable for certainly for approved teams. Is that the local right? So I, and I think that the I mean so obviously the council is the only way to. Well, fall tag is really that's cool actually using now whenever whenever a local decides that they want to join local teams. And not approved, but just standard mm -hmm. local teams, and it kicks back a message to us when we run this run the tool, and it says, you know, get with this team and have them fix the name before you 
approve them as a local is this local lint that he made? Yeah. So is it possible to expand that to teams as they reapprove or well, try to blend well, it? When I they reapprove, that's what we, we talked to them about that too. Though. I think the only trouble comes in when, well, the, so you guys want the display name to be changed, right? Right, we, yeah. we want all of those to be. Well, here's, here's an interesting thing. What we're asking is that they all be uniform, but are they ever gonna be? Do we want them in the local, local team's language in some cases? Well, it seems like the optimal, the, the optimal experience is that you basically either you search for something, so you type in search terms right. that are relevant to you, or you look on a map. Right. Like, the, for I me, if I'm, if I'm in a local team, I want the local directory to tell me what my local team is. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like we already have a kind of like a... Yeah, like it should, because I've already got where my location is at a granular, relatively yeah. granular level. Shouldn't be difficult to say. Oh, you're closest to this team. Instead of renaming, you could just group them by country. Like, because there's they are yeah. well, well, they're, they're grouped, grouped by, by continent. continent. Yeah, but I mean, as far as like country and then state. Or something like but even still, well, you're most of them are just country teams level. in the well, U.S. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a state level. Like, I mean, uh, it's hard to, yeah, well, maybe but, maybe but we just put, well. Florida only has one team, so why? So does North Carolina. So why make? An individual, the, the states that have multiple teams or the countries that have multiple teams, I, I understand that, but no. But I think the, I think the point is is that um, it's it's another layer of granularity in terms of breaking the U.S. up. So even though there's a one team for for Florida, it means that when you click on Florida, it just takes you straight to the Florida. Well, team. yeah, mm -hmm. on, on a map, yes. But I'm, I was talking on the text page. That's what I mean. So yeah. imagine imagine that view there. Florida. Yeah. Florida. Exactly. So that view there, imagine you have a state that's got two local teams in it. You'd click, let's say it's Michigan, right? You click on Michigan and it will take you to another page. page. It shows the two shows teams. Them. But if you click on Florida, it would actually just take you directly to that. Maybe just hypothesizing as well possible. But I agree. Like, Who would looking, maintain that list? <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Yeah, that that's, a, that's a trouble with that. So Laura says that, to be honest, the issue is mostly with the USA naming of teams. And I, I would tend to agree. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, and if you split them up by state or location, you wouldn't have to rename them. Right. You just can do that. Well, and it may be it's something as simple as you build this page and, you know, we have a thing that says if I go here, I go to this page and I search. And what I get back, if I get back more than one result, then I build this page dynamically to show somebody and say pick. Right or I just go to the one that I get. That shouldn't be too hard. So I remember when we first talked about the local directory some UDSs back, the idea was that um, the, the, the rock on which the local directory is built is, is Launchpad. And basically use as much information from Launchpad about the teams as possible. And then, mm -hmm. and then as, there'd essentially be a matching record in the local directory that contains additional information that Launchpad doesn't currently provide. Is that how it works right now? Is it's in the, in the database that way. So essentially what you could do is the administrators of the local directory or the people who work in the teams could essentially say, this is the location that I'm based in. And it would save it to the local directory, it wouldn't save it to Launchpad. Yes. So then that could generate that kind of list. So let's step back a second. Is this generated or is this something we built? It's generated. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's what I, mean, I thought. I, I think the content is something that we built. Yeah, the, the yeah. contents the teams have to specify because we don't get content and information from Launchpad. Which is why we have country information. That. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah, or country information. Country. So, so continent and country both have to be added by the team <laughs> admins. No, that's not needed, I think. Specify which country is on which continent. I remember going through 190. Yeah. Years. Right, but right now there's 10 teams that have nothing down all, all the way at the bottom. Yeah, because they didn't set a country. Right. Yes, so essentially what, so I'm guessing that for the administrators of these teams, a solution to this problem would be that if you're an American team, so if you're in North America, in, in, if, so I'm assuming that basically for each North American team in, uh, in the local directory, it says this team is part of North America because it doesn't get that from Launchpad, is that right? It says like you're in the United States or you're in Canada. Right. And we've manually associated those countries with the proper gotcha. continent. So it sounds like then if you are associated with the United States, then, then you could conceivably say, okay, well, now choose a state. Yeah. Right. And then that would, so I agree with Laura, it seems to be mainly a U.S. issue. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think techno viking is is getting the idea too, where we need to be able to find those both. I usually you. <laughs> I thought. Yeah, we also. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris brought up the the French team. The way they operate yeah. that is, it's the French language team yeah. as well as the <coughs> French can be or more French one, logo exactly. team. I was talking to Laura so, about this last week. Like, it's you know we have really two broad classifications, right? Lang so, some language teams mm -hmm. and mainly regional teams. Yeah. Do we think? I mean, this is a wider issue. With this is really a local council decision. I, I expect, but do we think that? There needs to be a firmer classification of those two types Absolutely. of teams. Well, because they're both are valuable, right? I mean, at the very least, I think if they they split the French team up into a language specific and one that's just for France, yeah, it yeah, would make it easier gonna, for us to handle. Especially for events, like if they want to schedule events, then you have French people in the U.S. going, "Oh, I'd love to go to that event," but it's in France. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm a member of the French team. I speak French. Yeah, because yeah. I've seen yeah, yeah, I've seen how it's been conflated a lot. Um, but maybe that's and, a wider discussion. And I think there's a more clear separation between like the Spanish language team and the Spain team. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's something that we can take out of this UDS is is for there to be for us to essentially subdivide the local community yeah. into two camps, regional teams well, and language yeah. teams. Laura, if if the members don't agree with the way that it's done, why is it not changed? Probably nobody's brought it up. I've brought it up. I've brought it up. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Never mind me. I mean, so given neither one of us are <laughs> neither one of us are members of the team. Very well, right. exactly, and especially if it's on the colonel. She's right. Something just. Hang on, what's being brought up? What we were just we were talking about the the, the language. Are they are they, are they are they receptive to the idea of changing? I can tell you, uh, we are not. You're from the French team, of course you are. Yes. Why not? Are you your boy? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, because we are uh, that way since the beginning, and uh, we are uh, to construct all the tools, the documentation, forums, and everything. And now we are this way. We don't want to change. We are the French team. We are in France. And so are you? Are you a regional team or a language team? Both. You can't be both. You can't be both. But we are. I don't think we can say that they can't be both. No, I think what we're what we're saying is that can there is also an additional like, requirement for the problem is if we are team. only a friend, a friend of the team of uh, France, uh, who take care of the, the all the stuff, the documentation forms and everything. That doesn't not, have to be not done by local. One team has to take care of this. Uh, it doesn't just have to be the one team. Though. Can, be can you maintain teams. this one team for your for the French language needs? And have a separate team that does France mm -hmm. as a local. I mean, the, the brand is it's, it's the same people. Who the, the, no, but the, the, the same, the same what's what's your relationship with the Quebec Logo team, which is also active? They in participate in the documentation. Uh, so they participate yeah. people yes, in yes. Quebec Logo. We have we have a different of, of the tools who are in uh, Quebec in, do, uh, in other countries. Do they participate in the the release party you have in Paris? They no, they they can. Can. Yes, we have a member of, of, uh, of um, uh, Morocco uh, who came uh, to, to see us and participate in the, in the party. So, uh, we have uh, members of the Belgian team also uh, who, who can, came, uh, who came uh, once. Uh, but in the, if that's there. the case, the Hungarian team can argue that all of us came to their event. So that's not a. I think I, that doesn't make us all part of the right, Hungarian team. Exactly. There's think, not one single team participating. I think, I think the point that people are making is that um, while it's it's important, I mean, you, like you said, the French team has been working a certain way successfully, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. I think what what the feedback is is that there is elements to the French team that go beyond France as the country. So, like, there'll be elements to your team that will be of interest to people in in Canada, as an example. Um, and there will be elements that won't be interesting. So there'll be the, 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 the huge 5,000 people release parties that you have, uh, probably not gonna be of interest to the Canadians. And that's, there's gonna be exceptions to the rule, obviously. Um, and I think what we're basically saying is it could be useful for us to, and the French team I think is a good example of this, is for us to think about ways in which you could um, essentially branch those things out. So the bits that are of interest to just French, people who speak French, would be of interest to the general French language team, and then the things that are of most interest to the re to the France of the region could be of interest to the to the 
the regional aspect of the French team. And I think that would bring value to your team. So to bring this all the way back around, initially when we were talking about making the site more social, I think that the granularization of those teams will help you see things that are more relevant to you. Yeah. And you can, you know, absolutely be, you know, in a team that is merely a language team, and I say merely, it's not merely that. But if that's the case, then when I log in to Launchpad or I log into this page, I would anticipate that the things that are being presented to me are of a relevant nature to me. Yeah, so you select what French, French right. is your language, right. and it shows you French blog posts, yes. and it shows you, um, it maybe optimizes the site around the French language team, and, and maybe, maybe it even shows you the regional yeah. teams that have and let's say, for example, I'm in the, the French as a language team, so I get relevant French items, but I don't get events that you're putting out locally to you. But they, they don't have events. Uh, when um, We have a, a complete separate site for events mm. uh, in France. Uh, we can also promote events in other parts of the world if they want to uh, uh, promote. So, so we have a French planet. And it's yeah. uh, brought from everywhere in the world. Not only in France. Yeah, well, it's, it's not to say that this is, is going to apply to you because what you've got seems to be working. Yeah. But I think in some cases, you know, for, for maybe other teams, they would want something like this. You know, maybe you guys don't, and that's fine. But, yeah. at, the, but at the same time, it does sound, from what Laura is saying at least, it, it sounds like at least some of the team does want it the opposite of the way that it currently is. Well, maybe well, we, we need to think, I think what we need to think about is what's the best, what's best for our community as a whole. I mean, don't get me wrong, the French team is important, well, but the French team is one logo team. And it has to be what's and inclusive versus exclusive. Yeah, we don't want to exclude. Exactly. Yeah. And to me, it's like the French team is currently wearing two hats. Two yeah, really that's what it hats. sounds to me too. Like, you're doing a great job in terms of France, but then also a great job in terms of French. Yes. And I think what we need to do is, my personal hunch is that the language teams are really interesting. Um, I think in the long run, the French part of it would probably have that aspect of their team grow. Yeah. And same with them, you know, like if we did just an English one and people all over the world wanted to contribute, they would be able to join. It just bring more to you. We already have the English team. It's the Ubuntu.com. It's everything. No, I know, but the point the point Chris is making, I think, is that this doesn't re this doesn't take anything away from the French team. No. It it brings more value because right. it means that it, it's making a French team and a France team. Yeah. Could you just make a sub team of the French team specifically for those French members language. that are in France? We already have sub teams for I agree France. Yeah, the Paris, Marseille, Lyon. We already have that, but uh, it's not uh, official local teams because if we uh, start to to want uh, to have more official local teams, you are overwhelming uh, you know the, the the stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's very complicated. The the United States has fifty plus teams. They're all, the majority are primary English speaking. I would say 99% speak English, but they're not all one loco team. Mm -hmm. That's what, I think that's what we're getting at. Well, and even within that, for instance, I'm in the North Carolina loco team, but I may be interested in a French language team. I may be interested in an Italian language team. Maybe, you know, maybe one of my goals in life is to take a, a you know a second language, yeah, and if exactly. I can get a pure language specific team, that will help me in my goal to speak another language That's or to what, speak more than one. Language. Yeah, like Rick Spencer is learning exactly. French, and he, and he talks with Didrox's his yeah. girlfriend in, yeah. in French like once a week, and they just hang out and he like looks at some of the French like logo team stuff. And yeah. It's a great way of of his personal growth, but also absolutely. So to me, it seems like I mean, I think I think the feedback is that it would be it would be an additive thing. It would be it would be it would bring value to the French team as opposed to. I think we'd all agree. We don't want to stump on the French team and say, look, or, you should you should not be doing it this way. You right. should be doing it this way. But I think that we many of us seem to agree that language teams are really interesting and valuable. And regional teams are interesting and valuable, and we should have a visibility on that in the local directory. And right. they, they're going to even provide value. So I know we have language-specific translations teams. They're going to be interested in this as well. So if oh, you yeah. can say, you know, hey, here's, here's a need for French translation of a specific thing, whatever it may be. That's a really good point. Like, it, it will bridge two huge exactly. communities. Like the and they can be from anywhere in the world. Yeah. But if they are interested in that, and now that, that's probably going to mean 
that they can be a member of one or more team. Yeah. But so instead of just saying I'm a member of the North Carolina Loco team, I'm a member of that and I'm a member of the Ubuntu French team, I'm a member of the Ubuntu Italian team, whatever. If I have those skills and I'm interested in those things and I want to provide some of my time to that, this opens me up to that. Whereas I would have to go, hey, do we have anything in this that needs to be translated? Who do I ask? Now I can go somewhere and find out. As of right now, the LOCO directory is local LOCAL. They operate on a LOCAL and a local LOCALE. Mm -hmm. And the LOCO directory as it is right now is not designed and it's optimized for regional teams. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry, but we can't customize local directory for the one team. No, obviously. I mean, um, I think I think what we're probably saying is that it will be useful to. We're not advocating splitting the French team. I want to make that correct. very clear. Um, it's not that we're advocating splitting it. We're saying that there may be a need for something in addition to it. Not that it's going to create extra effort for the French team, but there may be some people who want some kind, I know you do, and I'm just explaining in case someone wasn't aware. And the thing is there are already separate teams for separate French speaking locations. Right. Yes. We, uh, so we, we have a duplication of I have a suggestion. Uh, mm -hmm. We should just put another, we have here on the list of all the local teams, you have teams without country. We should have just another list of language, language, language teams. teams. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. If or French, if uh, they want to have uh, their own uh, uh, France local team, they can just create it and it will be listed there at, in the Europe section. So yeah. we, we should just move the French French team down uh, together with other languages because there are also other teams that are basically language teams. So not well, local so directory really doesn't handle teams that aren't in a geographic location well. So all of our development has been focused on a team is in a Ge specific geographical place. location. Right. Yeah. And we're we're gonna have to be adding things like a default time zone for teams to make it easier to schedule meetings in local time. Well that's not gonna work with a global French team. Well and chances are you're not gonna schedule meetings with a global French team anyway. At least not in the normal sense. So do you think I mean do you think the local from an engineering perspective, do you think the local directory could be extended in terms of the in terms of these language teams, like a Spanish team or a French team, do you think it can be extended so it, so it essentially just presents the, the team view and... But then this brings the question of what do we target with local directory? Right. Mm -hmm. We you're target you're events, stuff we can't do on Launchpad anyway. Right. So yeah. this... I mean, would it make sense to even have the events feature for a language team? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Although it could be, I mean, unless it were like, unless like an open week type yeah. thing would be useful. Well, but the, then we're getting into his other project that he wants, but that's a different yeah. story. <laughs> well, so, uh, uh, but it, but it, the point, if we're going to try and make it to where we can support non-local language teams, then we, like he was talking about my project, why don't we just open it up to all Launchpad teams that want to use this? So maybe, well, maybe, I mean, essentially what we're talking about is sounds like what you're talking about is a significant re-architecture of the local directory around possibly six teams. French, yeah, and, yeah. French and, Spanish, Portuguese, and completely whatever it might your be. definition of the local directory. So maybe we should just like do it a lo-fi way and just basically maybe that's a have a page on the local directory, a static page that yeah. just says, look, you want to join the French team? Join this mailing list. Or, you know, or, or whatever. Or French-speaking you know. people, here's a French page. Here are all the teams that speak French. That would be a good idea. We can provide it, because yeah. right now it's broken because by country. We can do it broken by language. Well, and because we have the ability to add what languages are spoken in a team anyway, currently. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have a static page that says, French speaking people, this is for you. Have yeah. a look at this, see if there's a, one, a team in your area or something that you're interested in following. And then nothing happens for you guys except the same thing that you continue to do. And you know, you just provide the same information. They join you. It's perfect. That'd be Everybody's awesome. Happy angels sing. That'd be awesome if you know if you go to the local directory and you change the language because I'm assuming it defaults to French. Uh, sorry, it defaults to English, and then that'd be great if it defaulted if, to if, French. If you so if you go <laughs> there and, and I change it to French, and then it you know it basically puts up like you know like in Facebook they have those messages if they want to raise something they put it at the top of your yeah, mm -hmm. your timeline thing, and maybe it said you know 
in Do French. You see the French page? <laughs> Check out this page and it tells you maybe maybe it could be like teams that maybe have interest to you, and maybe it mentions the French team, and maybe it mentions the Canadian yeah. team and that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. That could be useful. And then it, it means that you guys don't have to completely change everything. And, then, the those, well, and then those pages can be static, or not static, or dynamic as well. So we can say, what languages as I'm doing this speak French? I'll put them here. These, you know, these teams have people who speak these languages in them. Yeah. Almost like if you search for French, the results that would come off. Yeah. Just the search is done for you. So I have a question. In terms of the... Um, integrated help and the earning a position in my browser tabs mm. what exactly would I need to do to bribe you guys to make those features I accept <laughs> paychecks <laughs> I'm pretty sure he also accepts beer which might be cheaper I don't know paycheck might be cheaper this is true <laughs> he's, he's going for status on the kernel team I don't know if he's going to make it but he's trying I mean do you guys think that would be, do you think those features would be useful? I, uh, be, well, or interesting? I think... Uh, I'm interested. I, I personally don't believe at the current time that the loco directory is, that there's enough there to make it tab worthy. I, and I, I don't know that there is anything to Put it that way. Do you think, I mean, we, I don't we can, think we can that integrate feeds from local teams, happens. but are there enough local teams that can provide us a feed? I don't know that there's enough that happens it, on a regular basis to it, where it's I think it doesn't even necessarily need to be just like if a local team has a feed, even if it's just people who who are who are in the local community. Like for example, well, everyone in this, most people in this room have probably got a blog. And it doesn't I mean, I would personally be more than happy to to to, to, to provide a a feed. No, with a tag. So whenever I talk itself. about the loco yeah, directory yeah. or the loco community on my blog, it then appears in the loco directory. Yeah. So, so maybe kind of like something how the Ubuntu members, you check out the branch, yeah. put your name and your tag yeah, in, exactly. mm -hmm. push it back. So basically, and then, yeah. I mean, so, that that's something that would probably be reasonable and then... I think that, and next to the Twitter stream thing that's already in there, I actually personally think that would make it really tab worthy. The other thing that Laura suggested, which I think was a brilliant idea, is on uds.ubuntu.com, we have this sliding image thing that slides from left to right. Mm -hmm. um, and Laura was making the point, you know, the whole point of the local community is about people, right? I mean, Ubuntu right. is about people in general. It would be really cool to, again, this could be something that could maybe live in Bazaar. Now, but we, we've already had spam on the Twitter feed. Oh, I so I would be worried about what we would get if all it takes is a hashtag on <coughs> Flickr or Picasa to get no, an image. No, that's there. not what I'm suggesting. I'm just thinking it could be interesting. Go randomly through. I mean, we do ha already have all those IDs of whatever it is that they use. We could randomly go through. What well, essentially what I was thinking was essentially would be imagine, again, it could be in a bizarre branch or something like that. It's just a big list of links to photos. Mm -hmm. And then it just randomizes it. Well, he was saying we already oh, pull it quotes. for teams. Mm -hmm. So if you have a team account in Picasso or Flickr, we'll pull from that. We so we could randomly every, select every from there. Select the team yeah. But here's here's my only concern is, and I got him to pull it up. How much more do we really want to put on the home page? I mean, there's there's already a fair amount of stuff there. I I I should say that. Um, you see where it says upcoming events? Mm -hmm. I mean, so I think the design team could potentially help with the information, like the, the, the architecture yes. of the page. But to me, like if you were to put, if there was, if, if there was essentially to be an integrated planet around these feeds, there, you, there's a, the, the, the least interesting thing at that point to me would be the map. Mm -hmm. Because if you're already in a loco team, then you really don't need that map anymore. Well, that, but that was the complaint, the, the cause of that was pe people wanted to be able to get on here. Oh, yeah. No, just I'm, just saying, this is what I'm just saying that what may be a solution to that is to essentially make the map dismissible. So, okay. so once you've clicked on it, you can press it. I do want to bring up one other issue, and <clears throat> I'll give my opinion, and my opinion is probably not going to be the popular opinion. Someone filed a bug at some point, you probably remember this, about permissions with the pictures. Um, I, I, I don't totally 
copy. Which pictures? You mean launchpad pictures? It, no, any pictures that are no, that are put onto Flickr. Flickr or wherever else that are then put into the team pages that the teams identified. Because you go upload pictures, you have whatever you decide your copyright is, and oh, you're talking about people who are in the pictures. No, you're the talking about copyright on pictures. Them? The people who took the pictures. Oh, you're saying they, they may have a problem with like using them? The owners of the pictures. Um, and whether they want them to appear. Does Flickr let you pull out pictures that are not copyrighted? Well, it can be an so. opt-in process. It doesn't have to be a we just take. Well, here here was my, my opinion of, of the thing. Somebody, an admin or something, puts the information into the local directory. Therefore, to me, that is giving us permission to use the whatever pictures for I the put teams. On. Yeah, but for the events, the global events, we just pull from a hashtag. Sure. <clears throat> what, what is the problem? Is it just copyright? Or is yeah, it somebody a put a concern that if if I stuck a picture on Flickr mm -hmm. and I put a hashtag on it for a global event, or I put it in my team's Flickr feed. Legally, I can still say you're not allowed to use this picture in loco directory, even though I've put it out there. Doesn't the bug is a you can so I can you know which uh, API call we use by, by, by license. Get what I don't know. True. So That's true. you can just select all the uh, CC license pictures for Flickr. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. about for Picasa and Pixie? Well, the other two services. You should just yeah. say like you should just say this. This is the official way to get pictures up onto yeah for, for locos. I mean, basically, you're giving us and that you should be by aware. putting your yeah. by terms of use information. Yeah. <clears throat> do we need to define that though? I think that's or is that implied yeah. in the fact that the team admin has to enter the data in, and you have to voluntarily put your picture in the team's account? I want to say it's implied, but I would probably be wrong. It strikes me that we've already spent too much time on I this. Agree. Like, well, I agree. I think it's a non-issue. It's one person's bug. I think so, too. Was like, the person who filed the bug even complaining about one of their pictures being up there? No. It, the it was bug, the possibility the of it. Oh, yeah. I don't want to code for a possibility. I think that's it right there. Isn't yeah. It? Oh, they want to provide attribution for the photo, like this and photo so from such and such. The restrictive license on Flickr is an attribution license. Well, don't the pictures link back to... There, where it's can at. we have a yeah. server that says, do they or do they this is a picture of so so I'm sure the API would give us information. Um, it, it would depend on the API. We use three different APIs. I'm looking at that. Do people really complain about this stuff? Oh, yeah. I took that picture. Who found <laughs> that anyway? Uh, Greg. Yeah. Who? Greg Grossman. Greg G. Greg Grossman. Greg Grossman. He, he filed it? Yeah. Um, he's a Creative Commons nut job. <laughs> he's a friend of mine, so I can say that. Um, okay. Well, so he's been. Was a friend of mine. <laughs> Until I, guess, I guess we're at the review action stage of the meeting now, or the. So yeah. So. Can someone put the Ethernet on the screen? <laughs> it doesn't actually link to the pictures. It just comes up in our eyes. So do we think we need another session on this? Because we haven't got any actions. Actually, we do. We do have actions. We do have another oh, session. We have no, actions. we have actions. Really? Who's, who's got the, the thing up there? Can you put the etherpad up? We've been secretly fighting actions. Is there a blueprint for the overall uh, goals for the local directory? Like just You're right. Kind of like Ubuntu Software Center has a, a massive, this is where we're going in the next we, year. We just kind of really create know. blueprints as we go, and then when the when whatever it is is done, be it a, a blueprint for UES or a blueprint for, like we created a meetings feature, a blue, we had a, a blueprint just for that, and then when it... So what you mean is like a general direction document? Yeah, because I think it would be helpful for some of us who just kind of come into this now. Well, I think that's, I don't think I think that's what part of the direction. session is, is to try and kind of define a general goal. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, I think this is, I think this session is probably a little bit more like strategic. Yeah. As opposed to specific. And I'm disruptive, so. Sorry. Yeah. We're used to it. Yeah, I know it. Sad. And part of the basis for that question is my selfish view from mm. Vancouver. We we don't really use the local directory to the extent that we could. Right. Should. Um, we're embedded in meetup.com. 
mm -hmm. which has a lot of very advanced functionality for local meetings. Okay. Things mm -hmm. like paid events. Yeah. Like membership dues, all that kind of stuff. That, yeah. And a lot of local teams don't do. But so I guess now of, part of the um, question there is going to be, is there anything here that you see would be useful to you were you to consider changing? Oh, yes. Yes, there's a lot of usefulness in this. And uh, there's a lot I of overlap really, right now, but there's, yeah. there's some there are some things now, that you get that from one, one of the things We'd love that, to get off of proprietary meeting systems, yeah. regardless of who they are. But one, of, one of the things you can do right now is when you register an event on here, you can change the registration link to point to right. yeah. meetup.com. Yeah. Yeah. We've, so we've been doing that. So okay. That's right. okay. But I think that's very extent, useful. We can start you know, integrating more and more advanced functionality here. We'd love to get off. So do you think it's possible to carry a discussion to a mailing list about this so that we can continue this conversation? Or would you prefer we make decisions now? When I say we, I mean you guys, because I'm... Do you guys, I mean, it, it, you said you've registered some actions. Do you... Yeah, they're, they're on the yeah. ether Do you feel... Um, Anyone wants to add actions to that? My hunch is that we, another session will be useful. <coughs> I'm not. I mean, You're the one we, to make it happen. Huh? <coughs> You're the one to make it happen. Make the magic happen. I'll have another session if you code these features. <laughs> so I mean, maybe that's, that's an action item, right? Excuse me, asking to do. John O. Bully. <laughs> John O. To bully uh, local directory <laughs> yeah. developers. John. For his personal mission. <laughs> well, there's Five the virtual minutes. event blueprint we haven't even talked about already. Did we talk about virtual event? No, we no, haven't. haven't. It's a lingering thing that I, I so, think the developers are trying to avoid at the current right. time. Oh. So, <laughs> well, but it's useful. It's so, useful so we did, we did the we like meetings the feature to try and mm -hmm. accommodate online events. Right. So if there's additional. Hey, what do you need from a virtual event that's not covered by the meeting functionality right, right. is what we need to know. And then we can either decide, does this warrant a separate type of event, yeah. or is this just a functionality we should add to all meetings? Right. A virtual event we use in a, in a real way is a fundraiser, where people don't show up, they just say, here's some money, here's some money, here's some money. That's virtual. Okay. That's mm -hmm. the way we're managing it. So I, I'd like to recommend that we, um, if everyone's happy, that I'll schedule another session. Because it seems like there's still a lot of content to discuss, if that's of interest to everybody. And of course, when I say I schedule an event, what I mean is I'm going to tell George to schedule an event. At least you're honest. At least you're honest. I mean, it could be worse. <laughs> Not much worse. <laughs> well, um, so maybe that will be useful, and then we can maybe drive into the specifics of like goals for this cycle. For all who aren't aware, I posted the mailing list address for the local directory mailing list. I think so far we've had like three emails, so more would be uh, appreciated. Um, Just real quick with the meetings thing, is there um, a plan to fix the time zone thing? Yes. Is that a That's what we brought up earlier, is yeah. we're going to have to make teams specify a yeah, default time zone. Right now it's unusable for the California teams. So it should right. Right. So we, we've just been trying to find a good way to do that and still, you know, make make it usable by the French team and other, well, not even just the French team, the Canadian team's got, what, four different time zones. The Russian team has several different time zones. Let, let's put it this way, too. Canonical took one of our developers. Yeah, that has <laughs> cut our... <laughs> what? Like, it's really just unusable. What are we talking about? Just yes. Of that. Yes, that's probably our top priority <laughs> fix at the moment is to get local times for meetings. Well, oh, yeah. That's because very important other stuff is going on. Very important. Are we good? I'm good. Is there something to be added or we do it the next session? Um, it sounds like we're probably done. We've got three minutes left. Yeah. Um, okay, so if everyone keeps their eye on the schedule for Local directory part two, this time it's personal. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Loco harder. <laughs> hey, well, if we were to schedule another session, would the etherpad right. link remain the same? Loco yeah, that's, that, that's a bug I need to talk to you about. Double O John O. Okay.
because every day the, the community <laughs> roundtable every day has a different name. Today it was Community Monday, George Monday, 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 Monday,